Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here with a tutorial to create this dripping paint effect in Adobe Photoshop. It looks like paint, but there's actually no hand painting done at all. This is all done using filters in kind of a specific step-by-step -step way. So once this is set up, anyone can apply it to just about anything and get this cool effect going. By the way, this is not something I found in the Photoshop instruction manual. I try to post techniques that I've developed to use in my own professional work and then share them with you guys here for free. If you appreciate that, you can help support the channel just by hitting the like button. All right, let's get started. All right, getting started with a very simple setup here to get this up and running, a black background and a type layer. This font is called Retro Mentho, which I'll include a link to. And this document, by the way, is 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. This will work at any resolution, but a high resolution like this will give me some nice detail. And the big secret here, the engine that's going to kind of drive this whole thing is going to be the displace filter. So a lot of you guys are probably familiar with displace. If not, that's okay too. The basic idea is that this filter will take your image, then reference another image called the displacement map and create distortions based on it. So in this tutorial, we're gonna create a very specific displacement map that will generate this dripping paint effect. So in order to use displace, I'm actually gonna to need to create a new document. This will be an entirely separate document for the filter to reference, and I'll make it the same size, 3840 by 2160. This displacement map doesn't necessarily need to be the same size, but you can get much more predictable results that way. So create. And in this new document, I only need one layer. So I'll just use this background layer. And what I'm gonna do is right click on it and convert it to a smart object. And that'll keep any filters I apply to it live. And then I can always come back and adjust those later if I want to. All right, so I'll start by applying a filter here in the render section. I'm gonna use this fibers filter. However, before I do that, it's important that I set my colors to default. So I'll hit D. This effect generates its look based on what your colors are here. So default colors. Now I can go to filter, render, fibers. And in the settings here, I'm gonna change the variance to 15 and the strength to five. Okay. And next I'm gonna apply a levels adjustment under image adjust levels, or I can use command or control L to do that. And here I'll bring the white input slider all the way down to 40. And I'm also going to set the white output level to 128, which is exactly 50% gray. Okay. And if you're familiar with the displace filter, you'll know that 50% gray values have no effect on your final image. So when this gets used as a displacement map, so far these gray areas aren't going to get distorted at all. It's only these darker areas that are going to push your image around. But a couple more filters on here first. I'm going to go to blur and apply a Gaussian blur and I'm gonna set this to four pixels, okay. Then one specific thing here, this little slider icon here next to the Gaussian blur filter, I'm gonna double click on that and I get a pop-up for the blending options of that filter. I'm gonna change the blending mode here to darken. All right, and finally, again, I'm gonna to go to blur and use Gaussian blur, and this time I'll set it to just two pixels and okay. So no special blending options on that one, and that's done, that's our displacement map. I do need to save this image, and I keep a little folder full of these displacement maps, kinda just let them stack up in there. I'll call this one Paint Drips Map, and save. All right, then I'm gonna switch back to the main document, and I'm gonna apply the displace filter to this text, but first I'm gonna select it and hit Command or Control J to make a copy of it, and I'll just turn off the original for now. It's nice to have a backup copy of that text, but you'll see that that copy can also come in handy in a few other ways that we'll check out in just a minute. All right, so with the visible text layer selected, I'm going to apply Filter, Distort, Displace. And if you're using live type like me, you'll get this prompt. No need to make this a smart object. I can hit rasterize. And now I get some options for the displace filter. So what I'm gonna do here is set the horizontal value to zero and the vertical I'm gonna set to 100 pixels. And you can play with this value, but I've really found the sweet spot here to be right at about 100. And I'll hit okay. And then I get a prompt to choose the displacement map. So here I'll just grab the file I just made, paint drips map and hit open. All right, so the very beginnings of that effect happening here, and the idea is that wherever the displacement map was gray, it left the text alone, 
And since the map only had values that are gray or darker, the filter can only push things in one direction, down. If there were any lighter gray or white values in the map, it would have distorted things upward, which we don't want. So that's kind of the logic of having that displacement map be gray and darker. I hope that kind of makes sense. Okay, but the key to really making this work is to apply that filter again. So I can go up here and filter and reapply the latest filter, displace, or I can use the shortcut Command Control F, or on a PC, I think that's Control Alt F. And I think it's definitely better to use that keyboard shortcut because now I'm just hitting it over and over and over and over and over again. And it's pretty cool to watch that happen. I actually really like some of these little artifacts you start to get. And all right, so I probably just applied that filter, I don't know, 30 or 40 times. So we've got some paint drips happening here, and there's a couple of small things I think we can do to help tie it together. But first, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button. I really appreciate that. And I've always got more of this kind of thing on the way, so if you hit subscribe, and there's an alarm bell in there somewhere that'll notify you when anything new gets posted. All right, so looking at these paint drips, and they're super straight down, right? It would be nice to have them waver just a little bit. So here's actually where that original type layer comes in handy. If I command or control click on the layer icon of that original text, I get a selection in the shape of the layer, and then I can use command or control shift I to invert the selection. And now I can apply a filter, and it will only affect things that are outside of the letters, i.e. those paint drips. So I'm gonna go up to the filter menu and in the distort section, I'll use the wave filter. And this honestly is not a very user-friendly filter, but I think the default values work pretty well. The only thing I'm gonna do is bring the scale values to 10% and 10%, and that'll just dial the strength a bit back. And let's try that. All right, well that is subtle, but I do think it gives it a little bit of life. I also think a little bit of texture in here can kind of elevate the effect. I'm gonna open and copy this Grunge 158. There are about a thousand free high-res textures like this at texturelabs.org, so be sure to check that out. And I'm gonna paste that on top here, and then I'm gonna use Command or Control I to invert that, and I'll set the blending mode to multiply. Maybe move that around and find a good spot for it. All right, so one more thing to note here. Sometimes you want these paint drips, but you don't want the negative drips that are kind of punching holes out of the letters. And in that case, you can just turn the original text back on and it'll just fill that right back in. All right, so that's the premise of the technique and it really only gets cooler when you apply it to color images and start to dress it up a little bit. So let's take a quick look at that. Here's another document with a little more variation, and these are all live type layers. I know some of you guys are pretty awesome at doing custom calligraphy, but for the rest of us, I'll include links to both of these fonts. So I'm gonna get a little more color in here and create kind of a cast shadow on these letters. You might have a technique to do this. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail here because I'm gonna open my actions tab and I'm gonna use this cast shadow action that we created in the latest tutorial before this one. I'll include a link to that video. This action takes just about two minutes to set up. Up. And what I'm gonna do is shift select the white text and merge that into one layer And I'll also combine this yellow text into one layer And why don't I temporarily lighten up the background so we can see this work with the white text selected? I'm gonna hit play on this cast shadow action Maybe a couple more times then I will shift select the shadows and merge them into one layer how about making it a different color? If I double click on the layer, it'll take me to the effects and blending options, and I can use color overlay to give that some color. Okay, then I'm gonna command or control click on the original one and hit delete or backspace to just punch a hole out of that shadow, and then command or control T to transform and offset it just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that same cast shadow on the yellow text. Again, this is all in that other quick tutorial. I hope you guys don't feel like I'm moving through this too quickly. It's my hope with these tutorials that they'll stand on their own, but also that they'll help you to build a toolkit so that you can quickly experiment and combine different techniques, not have to start from scratch every time. All right, so I've got some multicolored artwork here, and let me actually make that background black again then I can use that displace filter for the dripping paint effect, and I can use it on each individual colored layer, or here I'm actually gonna shift select and merge all of them into a single layer. We'll see how this works on everything together. Let me make a copy of the layer here, and I'm actually gonna leave both of these layers turned on, but with the top one selected, I will apply that displace filter. And those same settings are still in there, zero and 100, and I will select that same paint drips displacement map, 
and then use the shortcut Command Control F or Command Alt F and just watch that start to come to life. Now, if for some reason the effect isn't looking quite right, let's say you end up with paint drips in kind of a weird spot, you can always go back into that paint drips displacement map and you can double click on these effects. So if I open the fibers effect back up, I can just hit the randomize button and that's gonna give me a new pattern here. Then if I save that and let me make a copy of this and then use that same keyboard shortcut for the displace filter. So now I'm getting the same effect, but slightly different paint drips and in totally different spots. I actually kind of like this one a little bit better. All right, then let's create that little bit of wave in the drips by command or control clicking on the original layer, then command or control shift I to invert the selection, then filter distort wave, and these settings are still in here too, okay. And then I might even copy a couple of real world paint details in here. Let me take this ink paint 162 and copy that and then I will paste it in here that's black so let me use command or control I to invert and then command or control T to transform find kind of a cool spot for it something like that and then maybe I'll duplicate that with command or control J and move that one a little bit how about making it a different color I can double click and use color overlay and if I click on the color box then maybe I can sample this turquoise color all right, then let's grab another one. Here's kind of a splatter with a different look to it. I'll copy that and paste it in. Command or control I to invert it and then transform and find a spot for that one. And finally, why not a little grunge over the whole thing? And I will use the same grunge texture again. I really like this one. I will make a copy of that and paste it on top. And since that's black with some light details, I'm gonna set the blending mode to screen, just picking up those white details and maybe kind of move that into place. And what if I command or control J, make a duplicate of that layer and invert it, then I will set it to multiply to kind of do the opposite thing. Kind of just experimenting with texture here, which is always fun to do, but that is looking kind of cool. So let's call it done. Well, that's the whole thing. I really hope this tutorial will be useful for you guys. If so, hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments section below. I want to send a huge thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.